Every time I hear a politician talk about AI, I have this cognitive dissonance, and I finally realised why. They totally misunderstand what's going to happen. I realised this last week when I was listening to the British Prime Minister Keir Starmer announce his new AI initiative. This is the global race of our lives. Now, some countries are going to make AI breakthroughs and export them. Others will end up buying those breakthroughs and importing them. The question is, which of those will Britain be? AI maker or AI taker? Put simply, our message to those at the frontier of AI capabilities is this. We want to be the best state partner for you anywhere in the world. Or this speech by the president of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen. AI can boost productivity at unprecedented speed. First movers will be rewarded, and the global race is already on, without any question. Our future competitiveness depends on AI adoption in our daily businesses. And Europe must up its game and show the way to responsible use of AI. Or President Biden. AI has the power to reshape, reshape economies, governments, national security, entire societies. And it must be the United States and our closest allies that lead the way. Starmer thinks he needs more AI startups in his country. Von der Leyen wants European companies to adopt AI faster. And Biden thinks that America is leading the way on AI. And they're all totally missing the point. Who's leading is not America. It's some companies registered in America who are in possession of the currently biggest AI models, the so-called frontier models like OpenAI's GPT, Musk's Grok or Meta's Lama. But these models are not the property of America. They're the property of some very rich people, very rich people who are developing systems that in a few years will be more intelligent than everything and everybody else on the planet. The mistake that all these politicians make is to think of AI as a race for profit or prosperity. But this is much raw. It's a race for power. Whoever will be first in possession of AI with superhuman intelligence will rule the world. And at that point, it won't matter where the company is registered, because they'll have multiple backups elsewhere to avoid a forced nationalization. Because once governments realize that they are no longer in control, that's what they'll try. But by then, it'll be too late. Those small startups that the UK and the EU are pouring money into have no chance to catch up with the frontier models. We already see this now, that most of the small apps are instead being built using the frontier models. So all that money that Starmer and von der Leyen are handing out will just reinforce the power of the frontier models. There might be a few niche applications where this won't happen, all right, but this will happen for almost all of the apps. Why? Because A, it's easier, and that means it's B, cheaper, and C, it'll be more user-friendly in the long run. A good way to think about the frontier models is as a new operating system. Technically, it's not what they are, but practically, it's how we'll use them. You'll sign up to one of them and use that AI to do everything on your devices. You'll use AI to write your emails, pay your bills, and procrastinate better than ever before. And for governments and other companies, that'll become indispensable quickly. If they don't sign up, they won't be able to compete. They'll need access for their financial management, military strategies, policy evaluations, everything. Not having AI access in five years will be like giving up on the internet today. And who will control that access? the people who own the companies. If you find that hard to believe, have a guess at which AI company made the biggest profit increase in the past year. It wasn't Google, it wasn't Meta, it was Palantir. In 
the Turing test is you have a computer that can convince you that it's a human being. Um, Palantir is a company owned by Peter Thiel. They provide multimodal AI solutions for data integration and management for large companies and institutions. They did, for example, win a contract to overhaul the data management system of the British National Health Service. But they almost certainly also have their hands in a lot of intelligence and military organizations. The name Palantir, by the way, comes from the Lord of the Rings trilogy, where the seven Palantir are seeing stones through which you can watch other people. Hey, at least Teal doesn't leave us guessing about his plants. And this is what the AI race is about. It's about world domination. Why is Elon suing OpenAI and building his own AI if he doesn't need the money and has enough on his hands already? It's because he wants to rule the world. What sense does it make that Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, declares both that super intelligent AI is going to be super dangerous and that the only way to find out how dangerous it is is to actually build it? If it's so dangerous, why doesn't he worry? Because he'll be the one in power. The rest of us will be living in the metaverse, mining Bitcoin to pay his energy bills. Now, let me return to those politicians. The only government that understands that this is a fight for world dominance seems to be China. The Europeans and Americans both fail to see the enormous concentration of power that's about to happen in the next few years in just a few companies. If I was the Queen of Europe, I take the money which was earmarked for that bigger particle collider, a few dozen billion dollars or so, and instead pour it into a publicly owned frontier model like yesterday. Because otherwise, Europe will be in even bigger trouble five years down the line than it is now. Though if I was the Queen of Europe, that would be trouble enough already. Artificial intelligence is everywhere and it's learning to code. It isn't hard to predict that this is going to become a major safety problem for internet browsing soon. Or maybe it already has, it's just that we haven't heard of it. That's why I use NordVPN. NordVPN is an app that makes your internet connection ultra secure. You install it on your phone or laptop and use it to create a safe connection. With NordVPN, no one can spy on your data or track your whereabouts. And it also comes with a threat protection that keeps you safe from malware, trackers and malicious ads. It doesn't just protect your privacy, it also makes your life easier. You know how some content is blocked for users in certain locations? For example, for example, if you're in Europe, a lot of pages in the United States have become inaccessible in recent years. That can get really annoying. But well, NordVPN has more than 5,000 servers all over the world. Just pick a server in the United States. Problem solved. You can make use of our special offer if you use the link nordvpn.com/sabine or the coupon code Sabine. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.